So you can hear there, we are returning to our top story, a throwdown of sorts in the House of Commons today between Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Conservative leader Pierre Polyev. A debate over BC's drug policy that quickly devolved into personal attacks and ended in Pierre Polyev's expulsion from the chamber. I ask the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition to withdraw uh, that term, which is not considered parliamentary. Mr. Speaker, I replace wacko with extremist. I'm going to ask the Leader of the Opposition once again to just withdraw that comment. I'll replace it with radical no, I'm a, policy. I am not asking to replace. I'm asking the Honourable Member to just simply withdraw. I simply withdraw and replace with the aforementioned oh. adjective. Pursuant to the authority granted to me by Standing Order 11, I order you to withdraw from the House and from any participation by video conference for the remainder of this day's sitting. So there is, understandably, a lot to unpack there. Who better to help us do that than our front bench? With me this evening, former New Brunswick Liberal Premier Brian Gallant. He's the CEO of Space Canada. Former Conservative Deputy Leader Lisa Reid is with us. She's the Vice Chair and Managing Director of Global Investment Banking at CIBC. CTV News Political Analyst and former NDP Leader Tom Mulcair is with us, as is the Global Mail Senior Political Reporter Marika Walsh. Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I guess we could say we have two very experienced former... MPs or members of parliament here. So I'm going to start with, with both of you. Uh, Lisa, was this a big deal what took part, what took place today? Yeah, it was a big deal. Uh, probably not for the reasons that some would think. It's a big deal, number one, because the speaker should not have done what he did. He waited in. He made a mistake. The uh, leader of the opposition clearly withdrew. He should have left it at that and moved on, but he decided to make a point out of it. And I think the other issue is the fact that the prime minister simply would not answer any questions around a very serious matter with respect to drug use, open drug use in British Columbia, and, and a request from the premier of British Columbia to deal with this decriminalization issue, which has taken hold and is very concerning. The prime minister, instead of addressing the issue, decided to attack the leader of the opposition. And then we he ends up with the leader of the opposition booted out of the House as he's just trying to bring up the issues around the drug decriminalization and having the debate. Kat Bashi, you said at the beginning it came out of a debate. There is no debate on this policy because the Liberals were absolutely trying to duck the debate and the Speaker helped them today. So a couple of things out of that, Tom. Uh, first, it's true that there were direct questions asked of the Prime Minister on BC's ask essentially to recriminalize drugs in public spaces, and he did not answer them. He did first call uh, the le he qu qualified the leadership of Pierre Polyev as quote spineless. The response from Pierre Polyev was to uh, call both the policy of decriminalization writ large pursued by the federal government, in his view, alongside the prime minister himself, wacko. That's basically how it unfolded. And then the speaker asked him to retract that word. He said, I'd retract it, but I'll replace it with extremists. And then the speaker decided to uh, kick him out, basically, of the House of Commons, and all the conservatives followed. What, what is your interpretation of how big of a deal that is? I agree completely with what Lisa said at the beginning of her answer, that Pierre Poiliev simply offered up the exact wording that Greg Fergus had asked for, I simply withdraw, and then he didn't repeat the other words, he says, and I replaced them with what I said before. That was the exit ramp that the leader of the opposition, the leader of Her Majesty, His Majesty's loyal opposition <laughs> in the House, is an extraordinarily important institution. Before you get to the point that Greg Fergus got to today, you've got to go through a heck of a lot of other steps. This was not only precipitous, for me it was manifestly, obviously partisan. And I don't come yeah. at that lightly. I remember when Greg Fergus got caught making a very partisan video. I was one of the people who defended him. I, you know, I've been a House leader in, in Ottawa. I, I was a deputy House leader both in power and in opposition in Quebec City where it could be very rough and tumble. But I've never seen anything like this, Vashi. Never in my career have I seen such in my view, blatant partisanship from a speaker. I think that he's disqualified himself from the position, and I am indeed one of the people who defended him. When people were calling for his head after that video, I said, it's a rookie mistake. Let him prove that he can be autonomous, independent, act you know, fairly with everyone. Today, he failed completely. And no surprise, of course, the Bloc Québécois was applauding the speaker for going after the Conservatives, as was the NDP. It's in the natural order of things, but overall, it was a, an awful performance by Speaker Greg Fergus. He, he just lost control today. Now, the Conservatives walking out poses a simple problem for them. How and when and on what conditions do they walk back in? Because they're never going to get a majority of people voting to get rid of Fergus. But Fergus should do the right thing and simply step down. He cannot, with any credibility, 
based on my many years experience in both provincial legislature and in the House of Commons, he cannot continue to do that job credibly himself. He made a huge mistake. When Pontiev said, I simply withdraw, he should have ended it there. Instead, he went after the leader of the opposition. Unbelievable. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Okay, small footnote, they all went back in after question period <laughs> and resumed debate on the Ways and Means motion around the budget so the world has not totally come to an end. Brian, the Liberals are characterizing it very differently than Tom did. They actually, um, and, and Minister McKinnon on my program earlier said, like, this is uh, emblematic of the degree to which the Conservatives are continually degrading the institution of Parliament. That's how we are framing this. How do you uh, interpret that? Yeah, I mean, I think that would fit the bill of what they would want to have as a narrative of Pierre Poiliev, essentially saying that he's somebody that attacks institutions. And to be fair, to some extent, he certainly has. Uh, we remember what he did with the Bank of Canada. And frankly, that certainly worries me a bit. Uh, it, it's one thing to sort of say things that you know that will be popular. It's a whole other thing when you're attacking institutions that are important. So I don't think that was necessarily the case here. It felt more like he was definitely just attacking the prime minister. So I... Uh, not surprised to hear the Liberals kind of frame it that way, because I think it's a way for them to sort of uh, try to show Canadians in their minds, or at least convince Canadians that uh, that Poitiers does sort of attack these institutions that are important. Um, I, I don't know. Normally, I, I agree co you know, quite a bit with, with Tom and Lisa. I uh, And if I don't, it's only nuance. Here, I, I have to disagree. I mean, there, there's not that many rules in Parliament. It's not that complicated. You just can't call another MP, or in the case when I was in the legislature, MLA, a name. Like, you just can't associate some sort of negative qualification to that person. So calling somebody a wacko, specifically, uh, just doesn't fly. Like, I think that's, like, one of the only rules, really. So I, I think Canadians are, are usually pretty disgusted with the way our parliament and legislatures uh, debate things. Uh, this certainly won't help, that's for sure, and, and it won't help based on based on the, the sort of uh, the, the attitudes and the way that it, it went from a few people here. But but that said, I mean, one of the only rules is simply you can't say something like that. You could say the policy is wacko, but you can't attribute that to a person, uh, to an MP, an elected official. Like that's literally only pretty much the only rule of the debate. So I, I have to disagree. I think that Podyev knows that he's been in parliament for a long time. Uh, he would know he's not allowed to do that. And he just wanted to refused to, to say that, you know, I'll retract. And his last retraction, I agree, the speaker could have grabbed onto it to say, okay, you know, let's just put this thing behind us. Sure. But but he was clearly trying to make a point, you know, the aforementioned. He wasn't saying this thing, but making it very clear. So uh, that that one, I kind of agree, that was a little more nuanced. But but at the end of the day, he was still obviously talking about the the, the sort of insult that he, he flung towards the prime minister uh, just before. So look, Expelling is not great, though, because I think this makes everybody look bad. I think most people aren't really going to watch the debate. They're just going to hear that there was this kerfuffle, and it's just going to make people sigh, roll their eyes, and say, there there they go, our politicians, not focused on things we care about and just bickering, uh, bickering in the House. I think also kind of underneath the layers of what everyone has laid out, Marika, was what I noticed from the very start of question period today. Like you could sense that this was not going to um, an easy place. Like it mm -hmm. was very personal, very quickly. Right. Um, and I sort of feel like it's a harbinger of, of things to come. It is going to be a long, long few months to a year and a half before the next election. That's what this question period told me. I think that the, the Liberals were raring for a fight from this very mo morning after the story about the notwithstanding clause and Pierre Polyev's willingness to use it. And I think that they have been, you know, they did not get the wins they wanted and the fight they wanted with the Conservatives on the budget after the budget came out. They are still looking for that fight with the Conservatives. And I think they saw this as that opportunity. But I think it also, the debate more shows some revealing things about the politics behind this. It shows that the, the Liberals do not want to talk about this drug, drug decriminalization issue with NDP. The NDP are heading into an election. They see how unpopular it is. They're trying to reverse it. And the Liberals are stuck cornered on it now. It also shows how confident Pierre Polyev is. It shows how emboldened he is, not just from that protest visit last week, but also just how he's conducting himself. He's not backing down. He is sort of challenging ever more. And so they both are pushing each other further and further, and that's what I find so interesting. I had a sort of weird feeling as I watched it unfold, which is like, 
probably not proper to say or anything, Lisa, but that uh, I don't think it's Trudeau's going to drop out. Like, it, it, it really mm. felt like they have an actual dislike of each other and of the policies that each would pursue, and they want to have that fight with each other. Uh, sure. I mean, from my point of view, I'm I'm beginning to feel a little bit embarrassed for the prime minister. I think he looks desperate. He doesn't look as statesman as he should. Quite frankly, the going after Pierre Polyev right away on who Pierre met uh, during a, a whistle stop when he was when he was out campaigning. I mean, that uh, that's not a place in the house. Uh, you should be answering the questions. You don't get to ask the questions when you're when you're in question period, or you're supposed to at least try to answer them. Um, and I. Uh, I I, like Marika said, I mean, this is going to be a long six weeks to bring us into June with this going back and forth. And quite frankly, Canadians deserve better in terms of policy debate on that issue with respect to decriminalization in B.C. There is a really serious issue out there that the B.C. government needs help on from the feds. And every day that they aren't dealing with it is another day where people are freaking out. I, I totally agree with Lisa, Tom, that the issue is of, like, it is a national crisis. But today, what people who witnessed, including the group of kids who are behind me who watched QP or are now in studio with us, was, you know, the word spineless and wacko employed to frame the debate. Yep. And, and it's really <laughs> unbecoming of Parliament. But the question is, do you throw out the leader of the official opposition for a word? I mean, if you were to do a scale of one to ten of bad words, wacko <laughs> comes in at about two and a half, uh, uh, somewhere close to spineless. And somehow, yeah. Greg Fergus got it in his head that he could boot out Pierre Poiliev. And that's where people are, are letting go here, because you're right. The, the essential issue that was being debated was something that has cost tens of thousands of lives across the country. So Poiliev had all of his lines picked out, and Trudeau was going to try to scotch tape him to some American, you know, shock jock mm -hmm. conspiracy theorist and saying, you're refusing to denounce him, as if that was the job of Poiliev in the House of Commons today. Poiliev was on about a big national issue that it cost tens of thousands of lives. And where the Liberals had an idea that you could completely decriminalize and give a province the power to do that, and now it's blown up. And now the, the province of, of British Columbia and the NDP government there is doing everything it can to walk away from this thing because they've got an election right. coming up and Trudeau wouldn't answer any questions. And so, yes, th there's, there's frustration, but there always is during debates in Parliament. You, you know, I had epic set twos with Stephen Harper, but I could never imagine for one second that uh, Andrew Scheer were going to stand up and point at me and throw me out of the house. I, it, it just doesn't fit. It, it, it has, you know, the punishment doesn't fit the crime. And, and here what happens is instead of defending the institution, which is the number one role of the speaker, uh, right. it, he has deconsidered the institution. He's debased the coin. What, what is that institution based on? Trust, fundamental rules of democracy, respect for others. He's we're even wearing a robe that shows that he's a little bit like the, mm -hmm. the referee in a game where you've got different, you know, you're not wearing one of the, the, the party's right. sweaters. It was as if the, the ref in a boxing match had gotta, jumped into the ring and socked one of the, the boxers. It doesn't work, um, Fashi. I hate to cut you off, but I just have one minute, less than a minute left, and I want to make sure Brian gets a, <laughs> a, a word in as well, Brian. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I have to say that I, I, I disagree. I mean, I don't think that Podyev was, oh, it's clear that Podyev wasn't kicked out because he called the prime minister wacko. It was his refusal to uh, retract that comment. It's as simple as that. And again, I mean, I, 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 I think the idea of having the leader of the opposition expelled or, or sorry, kicked out, I should say, of uh, parliament uh, is not good for anybody. I actually, I believe that it's not good for the, the institution. It's not good for, as you mentioned, Vashi, people that are watching that, anyone, frankly, but especially young people that are watching our sort of democracy in action, if we can call it that today. Um, so it's not good for anyone. So I'm not, I'm certainly not happy that that happened. But nevertheless, it, it was based on the fact that he just would not retract. And I'm just going to go back. Really, there's, there's the one rule. You just can't personally insult a fellow colleague MP or in, in the case that I was in, fellow colleague MLA. And he didn't respect that and wouldn't retract.